Hello, thanks for joining me. Thought I'd do another video here. It's well, it's so hard to get outside and uh, get testing done this time of year with the, the weather in Vancouver and not much daylight. Uh, so I thought I'd do another video here just with an update about my Rad Scout build. Uh, if you've been watching my channel, you you will have seen the uh, video of the 32 kilometer uh, 37 minute flight that I did. Let's start off with that original one. So that 32 kilometer 37 minute flight was done with my rad scout build using this frame which is a five millimeter carbon version of my rad lion frame so the arms and the braces were both made out of five millimeter carbon this frame weighed in at 145 grams so at the end of that uh that flight video i wanted to uh, make some improvements to the frame and to the build and try to get the weight down some more so this is the new frame. It's uh, 135 grams with the braces. So it's only 10 grams lighter than the other frame, but uh, it's actually thicker arms. The arms are six millimeters and the braces are slightly thicker or uh, braces are slightly thinner, but they're wider. So the, the overall cross section is uh, more carbon to it. One of the main differences is the, the arms have gone from five millimeter to six millimeter but these arms are foam core. It's only about a 10 or 15% weight savings going to the foam core because it's actually quite a dense, very dense uh, foam that's in the middle. Like I, I can't press my fingernail into it at all. It feels really solid to me. So I'll talk more about the arms in a minute. But uh, one of the other things I did to save some weight was reduce the thickness of all three of the plates by half a millimeter. So now it's got a 1.5 millimeter top plate, 1.5 millimeter uh, base plate, and a two millimeter main plate. So a little more, uh, a little bit more about the arms now. I wanted to use foam core for them to, well, to try to lower the weight down a little bit. And I figured that foam core for the arms on this one is, is gonna be okay because the, these arms don't really go through any uh, torsional stresses because of the side braces. So the arms in vibration don't really twist at all. The, the side braces uh, almost entirely negate that. So when vibrating, the strength of the arm is only really being stressed in an up, or, up and down motion, which is the perfect scenario for using a uh, foam core carbon fiber. The portions that undergo the most stress are the the outermost layers. So the top and bottom are the parts that get put under uh, tension and compression when the arm tries to bend. The center portion of the arm doesn't really undergo as much strain or stress as the, the outermost layers. Uh, a good example of this would be an I-beam for, uh, for a large building. The top of the I-beam is a big thick piece of steel and the bottom as well. And then it's just got a thin member in the middle to uh, hold those two layers apart from each other. So when the beam tries to bend, it's trying to compress the top layer and uh, pull apart or put the bottom layer under tension. So the middle section doesn't do much else other than just trying to keep those two uh, top and bottom sections where the stresses are really carried, uh, keeping them separated. So same thing here in the arm, the foam core really just keeps these top and bottom layers of carbon separated so that when the arm tries to bend, those carbon layers uh, take on most of the stress and strain of that bending. So I didn't really think foam core was gonna be, uh, was, would work out well using it for any of the plates because the plates are getting thin enough that countersinking a fastener into them, uh, the fasteners can end up sitting against some of the foam, which just isn't gonna hold it as tightly as, as sitting against the carbon. And with the weight savings only being about 10 or 15%, the, uh, it, it would only have lightened the weight of the frame by a few grams um, using foam core for the plates. And then for the side braces, I, I probably would have been okay doing the side braces out of foam core, but I was thinking that the, the way the arms bend when they're vibrating, the side braces undergo a little bit of torsional strain. So I didn't think using foam core for the side braces would uh, would work as well for trying to keep the vibrations down. All right, so that covers all the 
changes and differences for the frame. Now for the overall build, uh, the original one that I used for that 37 minute flight video was 452 grams with, uh, with battery straps and no props. So now this new build with the, uh, with the lighter frame and a few changes to the build, it comes in at 407 grams. So that's 45 grams lighter than the, uh, the previous version. Now of that 45 grams difference, uh, like I was saying, 10 grams of the weight savings is going to be because of the frame. And the other 35 grams in weight savings is because of differences I've made in the, in the build. So I'll go over those now. I guess one of the first simple ones, I just removed all the, uh, the mesh and the heat shrink covering the, uh, the motor wires, which is really just kind of decorative. It's only saved a few grams, but but every gram matters when you're trying to really shave weight down. Uh, one of the big things I did was change from an XT90 to an XT60. I originally had the XT90 on there because I wanted to reduce the spark using uh, 8S voltage. But I, I think I'm going to be okay with the XT60 because I've also shrunk the capacitor down from a 50 volt 1000 microfarad to a 50 volt 330 microfarad. And uh, Lowering the capacitance amount will reduce the uh, spark that you get on plug-in because that, that spark is basically caused by the, you can almost think of it as a temporary short circuit until this capacitor gets filled. So just a whole surge of electricity rushes in right away to try to fill the capacitor. So with a smaller capacitor, that, that surge of electricity is going to be smaller. Uh, one of the other changes here has been uh, removing the GPS mount. So I saved a few grams just from, from taking that mount off and uh, instead strapping the GPS right onto the arm. Now, normally I don't uh, like to strap the GPS onto the arm for my long range builds because I'm worried about electrical noise from the motor and the motor wires passing by uh, close to the GPS. But I've noticed with Betaflight 4.3 that GPS can now track more satellites simultaneously or more types of satellites simultaneously. So I tend to get a better hat, uh, a better higher satellite count with Betaflight 4.3. So if I get a few less satellites because of strapping this onto the arm, I, I think I'm going to be okay with that, with the new higher sat count that I get. Uh, this mount here was really meant to uh, have a GPS mount along with it, so it's a little bit more wobbly now. I think I'm going to uh, redo this print and make that a little bit more stable. Oh, and of course, the uh, one of the other big changes they did was the VTX. It used to be a Rush Tank Ultimate Plus, which would run off of uh, battery voltage, which it was fine with doing that. It was rated for 36 volts, but I was a little worried about burning it out because I, I have burnt out one VTX already running it on 8S voltage. So I've replaced it with a SpeedyB TX800, which is just slightly lighter, but the good thing is that it runs off of uh, 5 volts. So I've just connected it directly to the five volt regulator on the flight controller. So I shouldn't have any worries about burning this VTX out now. One of the things I'd still like to change is the antenna. I wish I could get a uh, Trurisi Singularity, just a nice long one that goes down to an MMCX. But all the ones I've found with MMCX connectors on them aren't long enough to plug into the VTX and come up through a mount and still get me some good reach up above the uh, battery on the quad. So let's keep looking into that, seeing what other options I can find to uh, lighten up the antenna because this SMA connector is, uh, I think it's two or three grams for each side of it. So I could probably save six or seven grams by switching to an antenna that doesn't require an SMA extension and doesn't have an SMA at all and just goes MMCX straight to the antenna. I'm looking forward to doing some more testing with this uh, new lighter build now. Hoping to get some uh, slightly better flight time with that 45 grams less weight. I'm also interested to see what kind of results I get with the uh, Samsung 50S 8S battery that I've made now. I'm, I'm fairly sure I'm going to get better results with this than I did with the Bach cells that I was using before. It was a much higher quality brand of cell. So I'm really hoping in my next round of testing that with uh, with these two together, I'm going to be able to break the 40 minute flight time mark. 
In the near future, with a little more testing and refinement, I plan on adding this frame to the to my page on the CNC Drones web store. Uh, currently, my Falcon 7 frame and my Rad Lion frame are for sale there. And I'll be hoping to uh, add the Rad Scout to that fairly soon, but I want to make sure I've got everything uh, figured out just right and optimized before I put it up in the store. Well, that's all for now. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.